Hi, Blood Talk fam. Welcome back to another episode. Today's topic is about red blood cell morphology. Is there a different morphology than biconcave discs and sickle cells? The answer is yes. If you are not familiar with the different red blood cell terminology that we use to describe red blood cells, or just want to refresh, this video is for you. I will tell you how we formally describe the RBC that we observe under the microscope. Not only that, I will tell you how you can associate the laboratory value and the illnesses with the patient's red blood cell morphology. Isn't that exciting? Well, first things first, please show me your love and support by like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It would mean the world to me. Without further ado, let us get into it. Let's look at the red blood cell membrane first. The red blood cell membrane is semi-permeable, lipid by layer. It is very permeable to water and anion, like chloride and bicarbonate, to travel freely. However, things are different for the cation. It is hard for the cations like sodium and potassium to cross the membrane. And because it's hard for the cation to cross the red blood cell's membrane, this is how the red blood cells maintain its homeostasis. Normally, potassium is found primary inside the red blood cells, and sodium is found outside. And this is how the patient's electrolyte results could be influenced by hemolyte sample. When the red blood cells are hemolyzed, they release potassium into the plasma, which causes the potassium to be fully elevated. We have so many terms that we use to describe morphology of the red blood cells. I will group them into three. One, describe the size of the red blood cells, like normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic, or acetocyte. Second, hemoglobin in red blood cells, normochromic, hyperchromic, hypochromic, and polychromasia. Third, is how we describe the shape of the red blood cells, which we will discuss in the next video. First, let's discuss normochromic. Normochromic is a term used to describe normal sized red blood cells. When we describe a patient as having normal size red blood cells morphology, the MCV should be in a normal range as well. A normal size red blood cell has an MCV of 80 to 100. And as you can see here, there are some illnesses that associate itself with a normal site red blood cells. Second, acetocyte. Acetocyte is a term used for variations in red blood cell size. We usually grade the variations on a scale from slight to high. Increase in acetocyte can be associated with red blood cell distributions wide or RWD values. Increase RWD values equal to increased acetocyte. You can see two cell size population presence when looked at peripheral blood smear. Acetocyte could be associated with liver disease and severe anemia. Third, mycocytic. Mycocytic is a term used to describe small red blood cells. I'll give you a tip here for when you're reviewing your slides. Use the small lymphocytes as your reference. The small lymphocyte should be about the same or larger than your microcytic red blood cells. Microcytic is defined for a red blood cell that is smaller than 6 micrometer. The MCV is less than 80. Do you see an association here? Small RBC, decrease in MCV. The hemoglobin usually decreases, which increases the hollow in the center. A side note here, usually in the microcytic, we will see a decrease in hemoglobin. So that means it's an increase in the hollow in the center, and that term is hypochromic. Microcity can be associated with some of the diseases like ion deficiency anemia and lead poisoning. Macrocytic is a term used to describe large RBC. There are varieties within this type of cells. It could be slightly oval or it could be round as seen in alcoholism or liver diseases. For macrocytic, the red blood cell has to be larger than 9 micrometer, the CMV is greater than 100, and the hemoglobin is usually normal. Before we are moving to the next category, let's take a look at these pictures. And you tell me, is it normocytic, microcytic, macrocytic, or acetocyte?
we will discuss terms used to describe hemoglobin in red blood cells. Normochromic. Normochromic is a term used to describe hemoglobin in red blood cells. We can tell by looking at the center of the red blood cells. The pale center area should be less than one third of the red blood cells. The MCHC of the normochromic should be around 32 to 36. There are some illnesses that associate itself with a normochromic morphology. Hypochromic. Hypochromic is a term used to describe a large pale centers of the red blood cells. Usually, hypochromics associate with the cells being microcytic or normocytic. For a cell to be defined as hypochromic, the pale center usually greater than 3 micrometer. It's not always, but usually the MCHC is less than 32. Here are a few illnesses that associate with hypochromic. Hypochromic. Hypochromic is a term used to describe a small to no center pillar of the red blood cells. This is the opposite of hypochromic. The red blood cells in this category have no pale centers. There are some illnesses that are associated with these conditions. The MCHC will be elevated because it could be false reading by the instruments. Polychromasia. Polychromasia is a term used to describe an increase of electrocyte or young red blood cells in peripheral blood. The red cell is slightly larger than normal red blood cells and the stain is a bit different. It's stain blue to gray. The blue to gray is the residual RNA of the red blood cell synthesis. And here are some diseases that associate with. I will show you a picture of red blood cells and you will describe the red blood cell using terminology that we just went over today. Remember to use the term to describe the size and the hemoglobin of the red cells. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank, chemistry, or microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.